I went out and I pay attention when I'm working on the water. I um, watch the old timers, the way they do it. And I keep my eye on them because they know more than me. And I still do it, even though I'm 50. I still watch and see what they do different than I do. Because I am not, I don't know it all. And I'm not a know it all. But uh, I watched this one man. I was working with this guy. I think I was 16. I was working with this guy in the summertime in an outboard. Um, and uh, he, uh, he had an uncle. And uh, I seen him scraping. And I watched him in a certain place that he scraped at. And uh, I finally, after a year working with him in the summer, I said, you know what, I think I want to go scraping. And so I went scraping. And I paid attention to him. This man did and gone 20 years ago, which is probably the year after I decided to go scraping with these four-foot scrapes. Um, and I went uh, and I followed every place that I seen him go. I didn't follow him, but I paid attention. My grandfather, which is dead and gone, taught me how to uh, uh, tie the knot in the lines because you don't have the same amount on line every place you go because it might be a foot or two deeper. And he taught me how to tie the knot. It's called a figure eight and it's no big deal. So he went with me twice. Give me the rules, uh, rules of the road, rules of the water. Show me what I'm supposed to do. I had to follow that. And he was too old to work himself, so he just showed me what I'm supposed to do. So I learned from my father's dad. I learned from my mother's dad. And I learned from watching. And I'm still watching. And first couple of days I went out, I done good. Um... But everybody just didn't think I had it in me. But I kept paying attention on the older people that were working on the water. And I learned, and I watched, and I paid attention. And now, this one day I went across the sound. I had no idea where to go except for me watching this older guy that was probably 80 at the time um, where he was actually scraping because you can't really scrape anywhere because of the old trees that are in the water and I was watching him so this one day I went over there and I remember him scraping in this one place what many there uh, went to the next place I seen this old guy doing it scraping and um, mm, it wasn't many there. So I decided to go to this other place that I remember him scraping. And uh, it was a couple people in there scraping for the soft crabs in the grass or the peelers. And I went way up inside. I ignored them and I went way up inside because I remember seeing him going up in there. He was scraping. And this is with two four footers instead of three and a half footers like everybody else was using. I had a longer bag but I knew I could handle it. So I went up there and I, I mean, I got like um, 15 or 20 of the prettiest crabs you ever seen. But that wasn't quite good enough because it was 10 o'clock and that just wasn't quite good enough on what I wanted. I wanted to catch 800, 500 to 800. Really, I was literally looking for two or 300 because that's how slack it was. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning I get over there, I got eight baskets, I got no trays for soft crabs, and you know, I said, well, I'll drag her outside a little bit. So I drug her outside just mm, 100 yards, and when I pulled that scrape up, she had any, it took me three times calling through each scrape, three times on each scrape to fill a bushel basket. Well, needless to say, I run in a bushel basket at 12 o'clock. And um, the soft crabs, I had them lined in my little cabin at 25-foot boat, gasoline motor, and uh, 
I lined them on the cabin, had a rag around them so they wouldn't crawl away. And I had my cabin with soft crabs and I had eight bushel baskets full of really nice peelers. And I'm going, well, i tell you what I'll do. I'll go in and I said, I'm going to put these out. I said, there ain't nobody else caught anything today. And then I'll come back at this evening. It was a Saturday evening. I do remember that much. And uh, I said, uh, as soon as I got in with no cell phones or nothing like that back in my day, uh, I said, uh, I'm going to call my dad up. I said, I don't know what he's doing, but I said, I'm going to call dad up. And then I called my uncle up. I had 1800 by myself at 17 years old, putting them out on the market for 25 cents a piece, and I'm figuring it out. I said, I know I'm going back out if i got to go out by myself. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I called Dad up. Well, he wanted to. He said, yeah, I'll go with you. It was like unbelievable because I knew that I had hit these crabs that nobody else had hit and nobody wanted to take a chance. And I learned it from an old timer that done it that was dead and gone. So I can actually say... It's not to my credit, it's to an old timer that knows his shit. And so me and Dad went back out. I convinced him he didn't want to. And the the bad part about it is I had to make a choice because I was just dating this girl. And um and I had to call her up and say, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to make it on time. There's no way. Not that money's more important, but I knew that that was my ticket for making some money. So I had to call her up real quick in a pay phone or in a regular phone inside of the shanty that the man I was selling to. And uh, I said, um, I'm not going to make it there at six. There's no way. And she said, I understand. You need to make money, that's fine. Which, if, if she said, no, that ain't fine, you better show up. It, look, when it comes to crabs and it comes to making money, you better make the money when you can because it ain't money made on the water every day. It's certain times of the year you make more money. So if she said no or if she said yes, it wouldn't have mattered because I was going anyway. My father shows up down to the, the place where I sold the peelers. I had 1800 that morning, and I went back out. I carried more baskets with me. Me and my father went back out. I convinced him to do it. I convinced my uncle to do it. I said, you just won't believe it. I'm talking about catching up Minokin. I'm talking about catching 10 in a scrape. To a, over there, it was 120 a scrape. And when I come in that evening... I had another 1800 I made sure I had a box. The man was glad because they were all big. They all shedded jumbos and whales. I ended up catching some kind of record. 3,600 crabs on the market is really, like, unbelievable. But it can be believed because my father was like, wow. Hunter and scrape. We worked for two more hours, said and done, and uh, we got in before dark and put them out. The man was happy, even though it was a Saturday, and uh, that that is one of the best stories. And it's not a story; that is the truth. And I, I wish I had a receipt. I wish I had the man living that was bought the crabs. I wish I had it. Because that is the truth. And so you were like, nobody, nobody top doubted dog. you. You were top, top dog. dog. I mean, like Top Gun. Mm-hmm. I was Top Crabber. 